What's going on, teamers? Welcome to Digipod, the digital podcast. I'm your boy, Varney, today in the studio with the boys, Mike, Dan, and Adrian. This is how it looks for me, but it's going to look different for y'all. Those guys are because, like, Varney's on this <laughs> way, Mike's that way, Adrian's yeah, down. Adrian's below me. He's, hey, uh, yo. We're like, the, we're like the Brady Bunch right now. <laughs> For real. Yeah, dude, oh, what, was that? what was that, Mike? Whoa, I, relax. I, no, I, never that. What was, what was that, Varney? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Uh, today is a day of uh, four guys together on one pod. Four guys, one pod. Who would have thought? Oof. It just gets worse. <laughs> yeah, just, we might as well just title. We might as well include the title. beginning clip in this anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Just, add it. just keep, just keep it moving. Keep it moving, you know? No. No. Yeah, I, I got to sign, gotta, gotta sign off on that. No, no <laughs> You already uh, recorded, you already accepted it, you already signed the liability, you know what I'm saying? You can't. You already yeah, you signed the waiver. Yep. Remember that form waiver. I had you sign in the beginning? It was the one that you didn't know you signed. You just kind of like yeah, agreed I don't know what to you're it. Talking about. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that one, yeah. That's why you didn't know it was an actual thing. I thought that was an NDA. But what? I mean, you know. <laughs> you know. Anyways, we got a uh, a lot to talk about today. And by a lot, it's really not a lot. It's just a lot of uh, ranting and uh, fishing, <laughs> pretty much. So um, we are just going to jump right into it. Uh, the first thing Locals? we're going to talk about. Yeah. Well, I was like, yes, that's what not, I was. I was like, we're I not was, jumping right into anything, bro. Yeah. We're going to yeah. jump right into the, the podcast. I'm sorry. Let me, let, hold on. Let's rewind. <laughs> we're going to jump right into <laughs> Locals. Did you Varnett so, popped out? Yeah, that was the DJ Varnett. Tee hee Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yo, what if I talk this whole podcast like that? Uh, <laughs> no, I hate I'll, you. I'm so, going on a hiatus again, guys. Peace. So, we, get a, we get flagged on YouTube for that. Uh, I uh, I went to locals this weekend and I totally won. I totes one. I took totes. Rapid X. I totes one. Uh, Rapid X is totes cool. I was running three of those bad Johnnies, and um, yeah, I need to run four. I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, I took you're Rapid. Lucky, you're lucky Obi wasn't there to bounce your shit back. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't believe somebody said that to me. <laughs> Listen, if you guys don't have a, a group chat, for your your LGS for your local scene where you talk shit to each other, I highly suggest that like you get one. And you guys don't need to talk shit to each other, but like we love talking shit. Like that's our thing. Mm. We had a guy. I, I, I'm gonna be honest. I don't even like any of these guys. I just love talking shit to them. We to- we just tolerate each other. Yeah. I I mean that's that's pretty accurate. You know, I, I on a regular basis I tell Mike to go well. Things that shouldn't be said on podcasts. So I was about to say, say what you about to say, now, buddy. As long as you got it, like you, you can be as toxic as you want, as long as it ends in a compliment. That's true. That's very that's true. Like, that's how I do everything. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's, like, I'll say that's my issue. I don't start, throw a comment. Start I don't like throw saying, a comment with all due in there. Respect, yeah. Yeah. I'll say some vulgar, vile things, but as long as I'm like, but you're handsome at the end, it's kind of like it makes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it does uh, I'm, I'm not going to elaborate on what gets written in our group chats, but all I'm going to say is that uh, I won uh, with Rapid X. We went three rounds, even though I was the only undefeated at the end of two rounds. So I won my pair down. And somebody had the gall to say, you're lucky I wasn't there to bounce your shit away with uh, <laughs> Melga. And I was like, okay, start a deck rapid mod, stupid. Protection. <laughs> Protection, stupid. What you going to do about that? <laughs> like, yeah, come but what on. if you didn't have start a deck rapid mod, bro? I would have totally bounced it. I would okay. I'll just leave a rapid mon X out. Like, <laughs> yeah, what's up, bro? I, uh, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I was like, miss me with that, bro. Hey, but he thought Word. he actually only said that because he thought I was playing Magnamon. Which makes that Which comment even worse. worse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Worse. We had to explain to him. Uh, he was like, he was like, yeah, Magnamon's protection is only for the turn. We were like, so the end of your turn. And he was like, oh, and I was like, and then you can renew it the next turn. And he was like, oh, that card's busted. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious, well, that no. shit was funny. I was like, you. Th- I was like, I'll give you Rapidmon. Like, uh, sure, level five Rapidmon fucks your day up. But like, if I don't have it, I don't have it. I'll give you that. But you, you thought you was going to, you thought you was going to walk the mile against Magnamon, Invincible Magnamon with Malga. 
Miss me with that, Chief. Miss me with that, no, Chief. No. So, no chance yeah, no. uh, I played against Dan round one. Dan decided to real sweat this weekend. That was the real finals. That yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> Dan d- decided to be a real sweat this weekend. Oh I saw my God, him. I wanted, eggs, test, I wanted to test and new I stuff. Was like, <laughs> and I was like, oh. We're playing meta decks out here. Now, I, I, I just want to preface this with shh, shush your mouth. Hold on. I just want to preface this with I don't care what anybody plays, but generally, like when we all bring stuff to locals, we just bring like random stupid bullshit. Um, and like I so I purposely don't play Magnum on at locals unless I'm trying to like kick ass. So I only played it for the Evil Cup and I hadn't played it since. Um, I saw Dan flip the egg and I was like, oh, okay. I, I'm I'm about to play against new one and I was like, well, this is gonna be tough. <laughs> Cause I, I I had never played that matchup before with uh, Rapid Mon. So I was like, that's gonna be super tough. Um I think I took game one then. No, took I took game, game one two? fast and then you took two and three. Okay. Okay. Uh and that it was a very drawn out match. Uh that matchup cemented for Rapid X. For Rapid X. Because first of all, this motherfucker kept dealing with my rapid X, which was like pain in my ass. Because I'm like, bro, I just want my boss monster to live. Uh, freaking Edamon into Valk and then just doing some double Monze X into Valk shenanigans. I was like, fuck you and your DP reduction. But uh, we went to time and I ended up taking it in time. It basically became a big stall match because he kept spitting out a stupid yeah. board. And I was like, all right, time to time to try to neg board down and rapid x is just so stupid because it's like a air quote a mini dexmon not like a it's not like dexmon in no it it's does, like a mini it's like, ruin mode yeah i get yeah all right that's probably better explain yeah. yeah it's like a mini ruin mode because of the being able to suspend all your opponent's digimon on digievolution which automatically puts the rapid x minus 4k into effect so against numumon's puny dp level boards you're able to just wipe stuff out and then also the gaining two memory when you're deleting shit is so nice. Pretty yeah, if you delete something by DP reduction, you gain two memory. DP reduction yep. or in battle, you gain two memory, which is all turns, which is insane because that means Rapid X plays so nicely with Mega Gargo. If you establish, which this is what won me my pair down match for finals, essentially. Uh, it was hard drop Rapid Mod. So my opponent was playing Gabubon. That was Carlos. And I was just like, all right, cool. Gobble Bond. He's just going to bottom deck all my level fives. Well, ha- have fun. Drop uh, starter deck Rapid Mon and uh, the level five. Have protection because I had a green tamer. And then say, all right, would you like to deal with this, sir? Because I had Rapid X on field already. Are you able to deal so, with it, too? Because like, <laughs> are, exactly, are you able is, to deal with it? All of blue, especially Gobble Bond, is about bouncing stuff. So if you have that protection, you're exactly. just chilling there. And if they swing exactly, you already know what's gonna happen at that point. So I might not have had the DP buff to be able to block a Gobble Bond because Gobble Bond gets the unsuspend, so it won't have the neg four from the rapid. But I had a lot of situations where I was able to go into a Mega Gargo Ace while I had a Rapid X on field, block, and then trigger the Rapid X to gain two memory and force turn pass. I was like, wow. Mm, that's that's, good. that's some really good shit. So I definitely liked rap. I already knew I'd like it, but I liked it a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, it's a shame bunnies aren't doing better, probably because of the likes of both Magnumon and Vaccine Armors. But that was fun. Um, let's see. So yeah, I played against Dan Numon, played against Gabu Bond, and I played against uh, uh, something Gino else that I'm Jarell. forgetting. So. Jarrell, right? Jarrell. So you Jarrell was playing Imperial. Yeah. And Jarrell, yeah, he, he was super new to, first the of all, version. What, obviously what my deck does, but but also what he is, his deck does. And also Aces, because when I tell you I baited this motherfucker, bro, <laughs> <laughs> when I tell you I baited, I was like, come on, come on, take that swing, buddy. Take that swing. You know you want to with that Pyodramon. Unfortunately, I actually never had a Mega Gargo Ace in hand, so I never got to uh, actually Mega Gargo Ace him. But the thought of Mega Gargo Ace him, 
actually I did because he was playing fucking mind games with Jarrell, who's like the nicest person ever in my life. You piece of shit, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, it's the thought. It's like because he was like, "Oh shit, I shouldn't swing because you got that dumb mega gargoyle in hand." I was like, "I could." I wish I'm I did. swinging no matter what because <laughs> I don't give a fuck if you block with Mega Gargo. Um, I'm gonna like I don't give a shit. <laughs> like, I'll lose my whole do stack. It. Do it. <laughs> what is it gonna do to me? Set me back a couple times. <laughs> I don't care if I don't get my partition. This is about fucking. <laughs> I'm making a statement here. So that was locals for DGU Varnet Tihi Ubu Cliff. That was for you, uh, Dan. How was locals for you? Uh, I got second place, I believe, right? I believe it was second. Um, Don't ask me. Uh, like he's, like Varney said, I brought a new one because I wanted to test out the eight Ukos. I wanted to test out the Edamon. I wanted to test out the Valkyrie in the deck because I already tested Edamon and Valk in Shakumon. I was like, if it was crazy feeling in that, I can't imagine what it feels like in fucking Numeron. <laughs> and boy, was I right. That is such a wild ass combo. In that type of deck, especially you already like have a wide board, you're just like, all right, I'll just go to Edamon for four. You might have a Volk on your side or something with Ace. I'm gonna make you swing and you know steal turn back and then just obliterate you. You know, great. Mm -hmm. So That'd round one, crazy. obviously, played Vardy. Uh, Rapid X is a problem for that deck because it just immediate <laughs> suspend everything and immediate neg four to everything. So if I don't have a minimum of a Mazimon or a low five on board, everything is dying. So Ukos is dying. Agumon that I currently have at the moment. Uh, any floodgates, any uh, Numon. Ukos, bro. Yeah, any Numon are, are going to die, especially if I don't have like uh, Numa X over a Numon. So that kind of slows things down. Um, so yeah, it's able to clear a wide board of Numa pretty easily. I think after a while, I was being not as aggressive. I feel like when I'm looking, just trying to think about it, because I was trying to so focusedly get rid of Rapid the Rapid or Rapid X on board from him blasting or going into another Rapid that I wasn't like being aggressive with certain turns and when I had an opportunity to swing. So I think that was something that um probably eventually like cost me the game just because I wasn't doing chip damage or anything after a while. because uh, I was just so worried you took about dealing a security off me. <clears throat> Game in three, game I don't think three. I did. No, because I was just so trying to worry about get rid of the rapid on board. Because he, at one point he had two rapids. I was like, he has he has to have a mega gargoyle because he searched one. I know he searched one. That's what it was. I knew for a fact he searched one. So the, my whole goal was like, I'm gonna get rid of all your rapids <laughs> as fast as possible. And so I didn't like I didn't swing when I had opportunity. So like I would have like two three ukos on board. And I didn't swing with them and stuff. Um. Just because I was trying to kill the Rapids. So that kind of like threw me back. And then he was able to just, all right, <laughs> I'll get into another one. And I'll just keep doing it and stuff like that. Oh, game three. No, was it game three or two? Triple uh, double Typhoon? No, it was game three, right? That was insane. That yeah, you was, hit, I, was I like, played oh, one and then God. you hit that was, two that out was of the security. Game. To me, that was the game. I, whatever game that was, game two or three, whenever that <laughs> happened, I was like, I immediately knew. I was like, I'm gonna lose this because that's now three cards that call that makes him have free searchers, free anything, and that was just like game free searchers. He but was more importantly, free body into Rapidmon. Exactly, exactly. Like, that's what matters. Uh, you don't you don't have to worry that's about what, raising. That's it. what cemented for me. Yeah, for agility. Yeah, uh, because I don't think you raised at one point because you were like, all right, I'll just keep using these and just pop off and i'm pretty sure that's what he did <laughs> yeah. and so like it was like super bad I knew i was gonna like that was just like instant advantage for him so i, I knew immediately i was like oh this is gonna be a rough game if i can pull this out and unfortunately i did not um game two round two i played against uh dark nightmon against genome dark nightmon if they see the ukos early they can some do some things but like new is just too strong too fast for it and so I won that. Like I won game one, game two, no problem. Um, especially with the Edamon Vault combo, Psst, doesn't matter what they do because you just go, you force their DKM to die from it, and then they have to spit a body out. They automatically die. So like, there's almost no point doing it because they're all like Skull Knight and the others are all 4K. I think it is. Where's the Neg Five on board? Mm -hmm. So no one did matter. 
And then I played um, Game One, Round Three. Beat him within like five minutes, something like that. Round one, <laughs> game one, and uh, unfortunately, did not have a game two or three because he left. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that was locus, which caused me to get. I got a question. Place. I got a question for you. I got a question for sure. you. Since you played the the Numamon deck, the the Edamon uh, Valkyriemon combo, like how busted, like it feels, strong, it feels busted as hell. It's it's it's, yeah. it's it's an instant game changer. Now, do you think do you think it's strong, so strong enough to the point where you think it should be addressed? Yeah, I mentioned that uh, in the last podcast. If you listen to it, Adrian, <laughs> last pod, <coughs> not doing research. Anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. no, I, I for, mentioned I that. Wanted to ask I, him I, I'm talking. I him, know. Bro. I mentioned in, in that last podcast. I think it should be considered just because of compared to other cars that have a start of main force of attack to happen. You have a body to go into that ace with no problem. Um, plus, it's also already negging as well. Those other cards don't neg them. Um, neg three. So that means if you're at a, it doesn't even matter what it is. If you're a level six or a seven, you're going to get blown up by the Vault Ace, most likely. Um, because you're neg three. So if you're a 12K, you're going down to nine. You're going to go down another five. Sure, let us swing and go through. Pop it. Dead. Uh, if it's an ace card, you can just swing turn immediately and then keep going and you just pop off. Um, in my TBL knockouts, I had I did the the, <laughs> the mirror. Legit, I think it was like two, two, three turns in a row where we both Edamon and Valk ace each other. And it was just instant like turn swings. Uh, it was pretty crazy. Um, and then even like even when that wasn't happening, if one of us did it, it was like an instant like, all right, I'm going to lose that game probably because now I can't do anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think it's really, really strong. Have you so, played? Uh, have you played the Edamon and uh, Omnizu yet? Yo, I was telling Vardy, I'm gonna fucking do that probably. <laughs> All jokes aside. Yeah, bro. The <laughs> Edamon. I was playing. I was playing it on the sim, bro. The oh. Edamon and Omnizu is crazy. <laughs> because you just bro. throw it, like you already give him six seven. Who cares? All right, cool. Then you just go into like yeah, a Vikemon, or if you want throwing Vulc Ace now, like shit. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, I've been going. Yeah, I go into the Vikemon, or I mean, literally any Vikemon, Mega Gargo, like either of those. Vulk, yeah. crazy. And the thing is, Edamon has access to the three best ace cards in the game right now, which is Mega Gargo, Vulk, and uh, Vike. If you want to throw in even Azulamon ace, because it's still a decent card, you can say that oh, card as well. Um, but it gives you that instant access to no matter what. And you just like it's just kind of a crazy like combo to me. Yeah, so we talked about that on last pod, so we're not going to talk about it too much more. But the last podcast did go up by the time of us recording this episode. So just going to quick shout out Mox Moonstone, whose comment said, sorry, but restricting Edamon is a joker move. Too many cards that force attacks to be a reasonable take. And honestly, I have to agree with them because you look at um, the new Lord Nightmon stuff that just came out. You have the Lord Knight option that is uh, it forces your opponent's Digimon to attack. Sure. Lord Knight himself forces or not forces, but gives all of your Digimon collision. So the entire idea of forcing your opponent's Digimon to attack, they attack and now you have bodies for potential ace. I actually feel like that's a direction that the game is going to not go in, but like it's something that they're going to embrace uh, probably to try to give, you know, some more interaction on your opponent's turn. Because one of the biggest problems with ace cards or problems, so to say, right, is that if your opponent removes your ace body, then you can't ace. But if you can catch them off guard and get them before they're able to do something, then cool. Like that's that's a plus for you. But I think the big thing to consider is that like how are these effects, how much are these effects going to come into the card game and how easily accessible are they going to be? You know, like you said, Edamon is <clears throat> has access to three, for, honestly, just four really good ace cards. Uh, the Lord Knight deck is all black, so they will obviously have access to the Lord Knight, but then they'll also have access to the Vikemon and the Mega Cargo if they choose to play that. And I think all of those cards are just, I mean, even think about like, the fact that Lord Knight Ace plays out a level five or Lord Nightmon from trash, Nightmon in text from trash, meaning you can play out Nightmon, uh, Digicross Nightmon, D Digivolve. You have Collision. 
so you can now block their body or well you have to block but like there's just it's so much like interaction i feel like it's in one way it's healthy but it's definitely you know you said last podcast that it was something that we have to watch going forward and i agree it's definitely gonna have to be watched i think the comment of like there's so many other cards that force attacks there's a level of difference in those cards though and compared to what edamon does that's why i say edamon specifically doesn't matter if you try to arm someone cool no problem but you're not going to be acing off of that play unless you already have an established board you don't need an established board for edamon you drop an edamon call it a day you're acing them you know what i'm saying and then you have um the laplace's demon right that's what it's called Again, you need to be set up. It might yeah. be only a one cost thing, but you have to be set up already for yourself. And that's how music that's a two card combo you have to use instead of just the one with the Edamon. You know what I'm saying? That's why I say Edamon specifically. Um, and then you have the Lord Naimon stuff coming out. That's an option, which again, you need to be set up for to use it uh properly. <laughs> you don't have to do that for Edamon. You just drop the Edamon. You could be at three, give him a four. You Edamon, you, they might have a, a level six ace. Cool. You're gonna put them at zero. Now everything is just null and void you know what i'm saying that's why i think there's a difference with the edamon versus the other things will it actually get hit probably not but i think that sh- it should be something that needs to be, that should be considered from bamba bandai i think Do another like choice restriction i, I think on mike one one second then i'll let you go i think the biggest thing why edamon also won't get hit uh, obviously it's just I, I don't think like we're at that point but to your point about you know only needing one card for setup, we talked about it. Examon, if Examon ever gets Examon Ace, you need a it's whole got, it's setup built for that. In. <laughs> it's built in. Yeah, no, yeah, sure, but no. What? Like, yeah, you need. Yeah, sure, you need setup, but if it's gonna be a blast Jogress, all you need is the card in hand. You don't really need true setup, right? Like for your point, your setup is dropping Edamon and needing the Ace card in hand. For uh, Examon, you could drop Slayer Dramon for 12, realistically speaking, have Examon for the Blast Jogress, and then do whatever, right? Like, sure. It's no, it's, it's no different. Like, it's, uh, uh, it's still the, a, same, along the same lines. Sure, it, there's like a slight difference. But in terms of needing like the setup that you say required, like Numamon very easily takes advantage of an Edamon into a Val combo. Examon, which entirely focuses on whatever that deck may do, if we ever get an Examon Ace, is a deck that can very easily take advantage of the same type of thing that Enemon provides to Numamon. But Mike, go ahead. Um, I had two things I was going to say. I don't know if Enemon needs to be hit right now, necessarily. Um, mostly because it is a strong combo, but I really think that the main strong point of Numamon still is just how fast it is. So Enemon adds another layer to the deck of it being faster because like Dan was saying, you don't need the setup. You can just drop it and go off of it. But I think Numemon already being a faster deck in general makes it feel way stronger than it should be. So I feel like still, if you were going to hit something with Numemon, you'd probably hit the low end like Uko or something. But I do get that Enemon is a strong combo with it. The other thing I was going to say with more interaction on your opponent's turn and like forcing them to do things or, or counter plays, it, we already have like a lot of good interaction with that, I think, and I'm glad that we are introducing more. Like cards like Seventh Full Cluster come to mind that where you can catch an opponent off guard, Levia X, like just cards like to activate from trash all turns, right? <clears throat> Even um, like I think, for example, like forcing an opponent to attack or, or or anything like that is really cool in general with the interaction. But we see that now with like um, Imperial, like having the all turns effect where if they digivolve by effect or, or play card by effect, being able to ace someone before they even swing is awesome. Like, oh, like you're gonna digivolve before you attack me or whatever, then fine. Here, like deal with this right now on your turn, like catching you off guard before the battle phase is even, battle phase, before you're attacking. <laughs> I said battle phase like it's Yu-Gi-Oh or something, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely, uh, I think, like I said, like those mechanics are definitely something that needs to be watched as we go into the card game. But I just want to take this time to talk about a card that I saw in One Piece that just got unveiled um, for, I don't even know what set it is. Uh, Mike, do you remember what card it is? I sent it to the group chat the other day. It was something uh, where it was Tashigi. It was a, it's a five cost Tashigi. Yeah. And it's worded that 
on play, you choose one of your opponent's characters and you put it in the trash. You don't KO it. You don't bounce it. N- none of that. You just take it and put it in the trash. Ah, that's, uh, place it in that, the trash that's a Yu-Gi-Oh thing right there. You don't, you're not destroying. You're yeah. not doing it. You're just Terminology, sending it. Yeah. You're just yes. sending it away. You send. English, <laughs> you send. <laughs> yeah. Adrian will know this so much because he played DBS. You yeah. have barrier. Well, for, actually, let me, hold on. You have deflect, meaning when you play this card, your opponent can't use any like counters against you, essentially. And then you have barrier that this card can't be chosen by your opponent's effects. And then at some point in DBS, they said, hmm, yeah, we gave a lot of cards barrier. Hey, so here's this card that on play, uh, choose one of your opponent's cards, ignoring barrier. Mm-hmm. But it says it can't be chosen. Yeah, well, I'm ignoring barrier. Like what? Like, Mm -hmm. Huh? So One Piece, they have, if you play One Piece, you already know, you have Borsalino. That's probably with the prime suspect uh, opponent's turn and Sabo as well. You can't be KO'd by your opponent's effects. Okay, cool. Here's Tashigi that just takes you and puts you in the trash. (laughs) Completely circumvents that. And I feel like when you start getting to that point in a card game, you know that like Shit's starting to go a certain way. Go ahead. I have so my so here's my counterpoint to that is that in Digimon we almost have that with cards like a superior mode, which Tux or um like like we have like weird interactions like okay, I'm gonna place your card on top of your security. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna yes. I'm gonna place your card underneath the tamer. We have stuff like that. The other thing, um, but but we have it weirder because like so one piece it says like those cards can't be KO'd. We don't I don't think we have that in Digimon per se. We don't have any cards like things that say this well we have protection. You can't effects. be you can't be pro- deleted we by have your opponent's effects. effects, I guess. And then we have cards that are just unaffected. So yes. like, if you can't be deleted, then you can get talked, you can get bounced, whatever. But if you're just un, like, if you can't be, like, like um, Magna X, Magna X, Magna X, your mother, right? Like they are just unaffected by cards. So like that would, I don't know. Like that's how I'm so, thinking about it. Like One Piece, I don't think has cards that say this card's unaffected. They don't. Not yet. But that's like that's my point, right? Because. Digimon, for every mechanic, there's a counterplay. You can't be deleted, but you can be bounced. You can't be right. bounced, but you can be deleted. You can't be DP reduced, but you can be deleted. You can't be Alphamon when this Digimon would leave the battle area. So that does get around the arrestor, Dramon Tuck. And I mean, Tuck is just another form of removal, but it's like it's integral to the game's mechanics, right? It like you can't say that the equivalent is like, all right, we'll take that card and place it underneath like one of your Dawn because that just doesn't make sense. But in Digimon, you know, you have Taiki who's already loading source under a card to use for a Digicross or an evolution or however. So like everything in Digimon plays well together and there's counterplay for each mechanic. Even though it might not be immediate, there's counterplay. Even Magna X, sure, it's unaffected, doesn't mean it can't be targeted, which is where the Edamon Valk combo is so clutch because start a yeah, turn, attack, but pop think it. of think of in one piece, Katakuri, secret Katakuri. He just places a card on life. Okay. That's like also getting around KO effects, also getting around you no, know what I mean? Like, okay. But then you can it's easy to bring out a card that says this card can't be uh, placed on in, in life or something of the sort, right? What I'm saying is, like, there was a clear effort to say, all right, this card can't be KO'd by effects. And here's a black card because Tashigi's a black card. Yeah. So, black's whole thing is cost reduction KO. Yeah. All right, well, we can't KO it and we're not going to give black bounce effects. So, instead of deleting it or KOing it, 
just put in the trash. Well, what I find really weird about that, and I don't mean to make this a One Piece podcast at this point, what I find really weird is that Tashigi's a black card and Borsalina, like the main people that are like, we, this <laughs> yeah. card can't be KO'd, they're all already are black in, cards. in black. Yeah. yeah. Like Borsalino, Saba, like those are all played by decks that do that. So it's just like a weird thing. To do. Well, so the only reason like I bring it up is because I said this to Adrian or somebody, I can't remember who it was. No, I was talking to a Surikage. Um, I feel like Digimon is well positioned as a card game where it's very easy to balance the game's mechanics, but it's also very easy to throw those game mechanics like out of whack. Um, and I feel like so far they've done a pretty decent job of keeping it in check. You know, sure, we've had some decks absolutely abuse it, like the memory system, for example, which shout out to another comment that said, uh, this is trench LP. Good cards are good cards. We're way past decks not cheating the memory system. BT1 through 3 was fun, but it's gone. That's not my point. It's not that, you know, decks are continuing to cheat the memory system and that's why the game's unfun. It's sure, cheating is essentially cheating the memory system is power creep, right? Like, you think about it like that. What I mean is when you have a deck like Alphamon that creates an entirely uninteractable turn or Beelzemon, where there was nothing you could do to stop oh, what it does. I think the, Beelzemon was the worst. Right. Because they were, like, Be- Beelzem- the worst thing for Beelzemon was that you couldn't even scoop once it, like, started going <laughs> off because there was a chance that they were bad and they were going to deck themselves out. Yeah. Like, at least yeah. with Alphamon, I knew I was going to lose. I could just be like, all right, let's go to the next game. Like, Beelzemon, you had to sit through it all because I was like, this person might be bad at this fucking game. They're just gonna lose they might themselves. miss one trigger. They might miss yeah. the trashing. Like, there, there's a chance that you do survive. But oh. more, like, I remember that time of BT12, Beelzemon oh. was like, all right, cool. It's turn three, four, mill 30 cards. Beelza X, X antibody GG. combo, it on swing, <laughs> mill three, GG kind of thing that type of stuff but it's what it did to get to that point and it was you know the combination of death slinger wizard mon but also that uh ex2 imp mon that accelerates the milling of the deck so it, i'm not saying that like i'm not like nightmare right i'm not saying that we need to ban ten thousand cards to bring this game back to fairness i think the game's at a great state but there are definitely cards that make it that give certain decks an unfair advantage basically and that's why i said i say fenry's a fair deck all things considered because of the amount of setup that that deck requires to actually do its stuff the only problem is when it gets its setup it's like alphamon you know it's like beelzemon but there is counterplay to it if you merciful mode them early (laughs) gg if you're um playing uh either the effect playing floodgate or uh you know like leviamon or crimson blaze gg you know like they have to extend to try to deal with those, but you don't deal with the Crimson Blaze. So that's the only reason like I bring that card up for One Piece, because I just feel like Digimon has a very good way of handling those types of things. We have Magna X. It's completely unaffected, but it only lasts until the end of your opponent's turn. It's not a, a thing. I don't think they'll ever introduce cards like that either, to be honest. That's not like Mother that has like a drawback to it. So I say. do kind of hate how Magna X works, though. Um, not because I think it needs to be banned, but I really hate that. I hate its effect where no matter where the security is taken from, the effect is going to land you. <laughs> yeah. like, I think that that's such bullshit. Like, I hate that right. you can blinding ray yourself and just give yourself protection. Like, I think that that is really stupid. But also, at the same time, take- you're extending your own plays because you're getting to yeah. memory just because, and then you're popping off with the magnet. Yeah. You, you should, like, that card really should have said, like, when you take your opponent's security or, like, when you trash an opponent's security, when you, whatever. When, a card when an opponent's, opponent's Digimon... Security attacks your security like i i like gen- genuinely hate how that card or is working. when when a it digimon just, attacks <laughs> and removes the security or something along those there's lines there's so many things there's so many cards in digimon that like they could have easily made it balanced i mean it's not like there's they're like overly like broken or something but like magna x could easily been like just your opponent's security mm-hmm. or you have padamon it could have just easily been you know any angel uh, level or archangels or something. Angel, right? yep. Or like maybe instead of cost bring it to zero, maybe reduce the cost of evil by two or three. Like there's certain things that it could have easily like 
make it fixable or make it that's fair, feels fair instead of, you know, being super generic or something like that. And so some of the issues that we have in the game wouldn't be an issue. Like, you know, yellow vaccine armors. I mean, for us so far, it hasn't been that crazy, but like it's still an issue in a sense of what they can do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like just would you go into a rapid on for that free, note? Go into a rapid X for one. You know what I'm saying? That's a less like a memory free, basically, whatever it is. It's kind of crazy. On that note, you guys wouldn't believe the Q&A and the poll results and all of the comments that we've been getting. So I asked, which cards would you like to see get hit in an ideal world? I gave seven options. Um, obviously, I think the like the prime suspect for everybody's outrage right now is Ukoman. It doesn't matter which Ukoman. It's just Ukoman. I know a lot of people hate my little bug eyed motherfucker. I love him. Mm -hmm. You know, Ukoman did no bad. Hashtag. No, get out of here. Ukoman. Just stop. Ukoman Just stop. No, Just stop. You, need to, you need to go away. You, you, we were watching a different movie. We really were. But, uh, Just go away. Yeah. Go watch Nine Digimon the said movie, the first one first, before you start talking. Yeah. You <laughs> can't talk. You cannot talk. Your, your opinion is not yeah, bad. I still don't understand how you watched the O2 movie before the Like, I don't get how you did that, bro. I don't get it. What? Either. Whatever it was I'm available not, on Apple on TV. Long, you act like of, you act like the Digimon the movie is not other, available to you. It's not available for me to sit downstairs with my wife and children and watch on my Apple TV now. It is not, bro. Bro, That's you're telling me problems, you can't bro. stream to your fucking Apple TV. I know who you are. I, I know, know right? What your house looks like. I know what devices are in your home. <laughs> I have a. You act like you can't. I'm not going to say anything that could incriminate me. me. I'm I not going to understand how technology works. All right, exactly. See, here's the issue, right? No, let me, Mike. Let me tell you. So you, you guys, have a Plex server. So right. no, I don't. I, I'll here's a five minute Varney rant that has absolutely nothing to do with Digimon. If you guys hate this, I apologize. You can skip jump ahead. forward five skip, minutes. Skip ahead. Timestamp. So the entire reason that I have a 3D printer right now is because I went to Micro Center. If you guys don't know what Micro Center is, it is it's the awesome. nerds. It's nerd haven, dude. Fucking so geek cool. haven. All yeah, right. That's sick. I could have picked up a solid state. I, all right. So my server constantly kills itself. I don't know why, but every time I boot it up, Mike, something with the Intel Arc GPUs, uh, whenever I trigger resizable bar, throws it out of whack. And it refuses to see the GPT partition. I'm sorry, this is a bunch of nerd talks. If you guys aren't interested, again, jump forward. Uh, it I'm lost too. Fucking throws it out, and the computer does not boot anymore. And I got to the point where I got so fed up with it, I had to reinstall Windows. <laughs> now, here's the issue, right? I reinstalled Windows, I got everything working. I ran out of storage. All right. I have that's 22. Crazy. I have 22 terabytes now. That's so Jeez. crazy. Prior, prior to that, <laughs> I had I had 10 terabytes in that server and I ran out of storage. So uh, my background is I previously worked in IT. So like that's why I know how all this shit works. I have a bunch of servers from when I used to work in IT. So I have a NAS set up. That's a network attached storage. And it basically means here's a bunch of hard drives attached to your network that you can attach to. Mm -hmm. That server wouldn't fucking boot because for whatever reason, it didn't recognize the hard drive. So I had to go buy a solid state drive. So I took, I, instead of buying one, I took it out of the computer and I put it in and okay, now the computer boots. Do you know what it started telling me? That the fucking solid state was having a smart error and that it was critical and that it couldn't run anymore. And I was like, well, fuck, I have to go buy a solid state. I don't want to pay. $50 to Best Buy, so let me drive up to Micro Center and buy a $20 uh, solid state and drive my ass back down. So that's what I did. And while I was in Micro Center, he I came home with a 3D printer. I saw some 3D printers and I was like, ooh, this looks interesting. I'm not going to lie, Varney. I thought the story was going to end with the reason of why you couldn't watch the first movie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, getting we're getting there. No, we're getting there. We're getting there. No, we're getting there. We're getting there. We're almost there. So that's how I ended up with a 3D printer. I just had to throw that in there as well. That's how this is the entire reason I ended up with a 3D printer because of my Plex server. So now I come back home, I install the solid state, right? I get the same error. Yeah. Why am I getting the same error with a new solid state? 
All right, so now I have to buy a new uh, SATA to USB interface. I take my ass back to Micro Center. I pick up a new uh, cable, and I also pick up a new printer. So now I'm two printers in with a solid. When all I drove up for was the solid state and the draw and the cable. Right. All right, we come back. Now everything's working. So now, here's the issue. All of my movies that I had are gone because I had to wipe everything and reinstall. Mm -hmm. So now I have 22 terabytes, which is almost chewed up. I have six terabytes left. Digimon is one of the movies that just got downloaded. But for the last six months, I've been trying to get this fucking Plex server up and going. And for the last six months, I've been struggling with all of these fucking issues. That's why I haven't watched it. That's why I can't watch it as easily. Because don't I know? don't have it running. You know, you just go like on, on like I don't know somewhere else and you just quickly. Stream I can't it watch something. that on my Apple TV. No, no. During my first job in IT, Varney, mm -hmm. I had this boss. He was a great mm -hmm. guy, nice dude. But he knew when we were smoking weed in the office, and he would come down <laughs> and he would torment us because of it. Right? He knew. He just knew. Why? I don't know how he knew. He just always. Why knew, were you right? smoking weed? It just doesn't matter. He just knew. So, one time. He, I, my coworker got me really uh, high. I, I was fucking way too high to be working. Honestly, I shouldn't have been working. I was really fucked up. And he came down and he just yeah. looked at me and he told me a 30 minute story. And then at the end of that 30 minute story, he just left. He didn't finish the story. I had no idea how it will ever end. That's what you just kind of did. To me. <laughs> Yo, I'm going to age myself here, but do you have a DVD player at home? Because I will lend you I my copy a, of the Digimon movie. I have a PS5. And you can watch it. You can PS5 watch it works. on DVD player. Do PS. And you could watch. Do, yeah, I was gonna say, do PS5 the, still play DVDs? Yeah, you can watch the do. Angela and Anaconda <laughs> intro to the movie. Dude, that's the that best part. Was exclusive have to. to the DVD. So. No, that's not exclusive so to the DVD, is it? No. Yeah, it was when it was played in theaters. It was yeah. it played in front of uh, theater copies. Yeah, I know. And that's what got. Yeah, that's what got put on the DVD. Like when it was in theaters. Yeah, I have the VHS of this. Had the same thing. They all, the Anaconda part is yeah, all yeah, yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have okay. the DVD. Yeah, I was like, I was like, it's yeah. everywhere. I thought every yeah. time yeah. I ever watched the Angela Anaconda part. Yeah, so. it was part. Okay. Of the, they played it in front of the movie. Yeah, we, you, I got you. I got like, you. It's exclusive to DVD. I was like, what are you? Don't no, <laughs> I mean like they. I mean like you can. I don't. I mean I don't know. Can you? If you no, watch it right. online, you can still see it. Yeah, yeah, we're past, we're past oh. the five minute mark. So for those of you who are now jumping forward to past the Varney rant. TLDR, I will watch it soon. I'll give you my DVD. We have 17 total votes. Nine votes for promo slash BT16 Ukoman. Both. Get them the fuck because out Because most people will agree that both are an issue. Uh, only one vote for Magna X. And it's good to see because I feel like a lot of people had like this <clears throat> like unhealthy hatred towards Magna X. And it's like, Magna X is fine. It's other cards that are an issue, right? Uh, two votes for BT14 <clears throat> Panamon, four votes for Heaven's Judgment, and one vote for Other. Now, Heaven's Judgment's got to go for sure. Jumping across to um, the Q&A, I said, what cards do you think will be hit on a ban list after the recent regional results? <clears throat> Thanasis said, Emissary of Hope, this card is easily abusable and offers free digi evolutions. It has to be restricted alongside Ukomons to slow down the format. Walker said, Heavens and Ukos feel inevitable. Patamon is one I stand by. The value it generates in both memory gain plus further setup for emissary plays is too good. It will only be stronger with new vaccine cards. And on our most recent podcast, there are so many people who are like, yeah, Patamon, I just, it, it, emissary, Patamon. Like it's, it's the reoccurring trend. That's what I keep seeing. Pa Patamon, emissary, emissary, Patamon. There's a lot of hate for. Backseat. I would like to interject here and just say Ooh, we need to word. stop saying limit cards. We need to fucking start outright banning shit. I we yeah, I talked you. about it, we talked about it two podcasts ago. I just want to reiterate it again. Yep. I'm so fucking tired of these half ass fucking ban lists that aren't ban lists. They're just limits. let's be realistic. I do not want to see the fucking one of bro. Get it out I, of me. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of it. Imagine so you get hit with that one of emissary. Oh, it it's like H P D. It doesn't make sense to me because in Digimon, it's a stack based game. If the card is broken enough that it, that if it's in the stack, it can win you the game. Why is it at one? Get yeah. it? I don't want to see it. The only cards to me that make sense when they're at one are cards like uh, Ice Wall. 
ice walls fine or even like cards that add security attack plus one like if that's at one i understand it like that could be at one because you're not adding four to the, like alphamon right doru Greymon was like that's at one i i'm like whatever like that's cool i, I don't mind that you know what I mean? Like, yeah. because you can't add four more of them anymore. You can't add four to a stack. Yeah. But like, I'm so tired of losing to, like, to stupid one of. Like, like, oh, you you saw your random one of? Thank you, bro. Saki. I'm so glad this happened. This is a great game. <laughs> oh, H2D, you went Bloom plus four? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I don't do. I don't even think HPD is ever gonna get banned at this, at point. this point, point, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Never, <laughs> but like, um, I just like it doesn't make sense to me. Like, if a card is good enough that if you see it, you win the game, and that's why it got hit, then why is it at one? That Agreed. makes no sense. I'm so tired of that shit. So otherwise, otherwise, I agree. Emissary needs to go. Patamon needs to go. Fuck Ukomon. Like, I don't. Like, ah. Yeah, yeah uh, I, totally I feel like the Ukomons are something I'd be fine with at one. Like both of them. Yeah, I would be fine with that I'd too. Even I'm be already fine on with my a, hate train. So no, fuck. <laughs> I'd even be fine with like a semi limit, right? Like, a, like getting having two of those cards. No, so that you could run like four murder. Ukomon max, like two of each. But no. like, Numan running eight Ukomon is just like, oh, good lord! Like that was my biggest thing playing against Dan because at one point. He had like two Ukomon out and one in raising. And I was like, if I don't deal with this, he has so much advantage next turn because he had the searching one and two memory gaining ones. I was like, he's going to get a search and he's going to gain two memory. How do I deal with this? I yeah, just, just pile up. Think of how thankful we shall be that Bukomon is at one right now and not at four. Imagine we had to deal with jamming Ukomon, <laughs> bro. Yo, my Ukumon okay, no, I hate it sometimes. Bro. <laughs> Alrighty, so I don't need it. <laughs> oh, oh god. I'll just say one thing real quick. Uh, well about the whole ban list thing. Bandai has a history of not addressing the problems when they need to be addressed. They just kind of sweep it under the rug a little yep. bit. And then much, much later on, they'll get rid of it. And I hate to bring up Dragon Ball, but that's where my background is. That game was notorious for that. Like they would have real legitimate problems in the game and they would just try and put band-aids on it instead of just getting rid of the initial problem that opened up all the complaints and all the issues so it's just that's just what they do they're yeah. trying to please too many people instead of just doing what's the best thing for the game and that was an with, english they only game, game. The, they do that with every game uh one piece is the same way by the time yeah. they banned whitebeard um whitebeard was only even banned for a month yeah they never they were like literally like like everyone was like please ban this fucking deck i don't want to deal with it and they're like all right fine and they literally only banned it for a month it's like they're really bad sakazuki is still in the english meta because it was only banned for japan and then they made like this new errata for sakazuki which is just fucking awful no oh, that, people, that like, leader is trash bro so bad but like even like uh there's a purple yellow pudding now and like there's like 10 cost big mom has been a problem in one piece I feel like since uh, OP04 with Katakuri and it still is not going to get addressed and now they can just ramp into 10 cost Big Mom and it's the stupidest shit in the world. Mm-hmm. I, I have like no, I don't know. They're just dumb. Yeah. They, they and much like that talking about, about Dragon Ball, I can talk on it because I played it not recently, but like I've played it within the last like year and a half, two years. That's, they came out with an entirely new block, a whole new like mechanic, which was Zenkai. That was like your Z energy, right? That was BT18 for them. And they had two leaders that were absolutely cracked. It was oh, SS4. Red Sin and SS4. Yeah, SS4 and Red Sin Shenron. And they dominated for three sets. It took mm-hmm. all of three sets for those cards to get hit. All of BT18, all of BT19, all of BT20. They were finally banned, not restricted banned in bt 21 it took three sets for these for these decks to like dominate for ban and they'd be like all right like yeah we got a ban they they tried i remember when uh i think yamcha got limited they limited some gamma cards like they were or yamcha not, actually that's, relevant that's, uh, yeah merciless barrage uh, was a merciless problem barrage, for a yeah. long time well it's because it was a good plays. red exactly yep yeah free counter plays and they, stupid. they restricted the that before they banned these leaders and they banned mm-hmm. they even banned the freaking eight drop for uh ss4 because that card was also stupidly cracked and it's like 
how long like how long do we have to suffer before you deal with the issue and it's like Three compounded sets. for digimon because they're considering both an english player base and a japanese player base and i know everybody's biggest concern is all right cool so when we're united what does this mean for the ban list mm. are you going to give us a timely ban list or are you going to keep playing the same pussyfoot and be like <laughs> well I know it's BT24 right now, and we're going to try to extend this to BT26 before and hope it's not an issue by BT26. No, just deal with the issue retroactively. Hit the cards that need to be hit. And then if it can come off the ban list, have it come off the fucking ban list. It's not that hard. Facts. Yeah, I think they're never going to do that, though, because they don't want a repeat of BT14 uh, with decline in sales because they pre-limited Apocalymon before it came 15, out in English. BT15. Or 15, rather. So, yeah, when we unify the game, I think ban lists are going to be more reactive as, as opposed to proactive because we have to figure everything out first and we have to figure out all the degenerate combos at the same time and not like be spoon fed it like from Japan. Like we all have to figure it out first and then they can address it. So it's never going to happen. It's hey, just, I just want to say for what it's <laughs> worth, they did. They did limit a card for Dragon Ball, like basically a set later. BT23, Kamehameha, Omen of Victory, and it was limited in BT24. That's a that's pretty good. Hope you know. Hopefully, that's a like this is the game. <laughs> well, that's neither here nor there. But go ahead, Dan. I was gonna say it depends on if they decide to have a set time of ban list too that might be a thing as well maybe going forward especially we're, we're being united uh right now it's just up in the air random and they go by what they hear right now and they go that's how mm -hmm. they do their ban list so if once unification happens maybe they'll have hey we'll have a ban list like january and then the next ban list would be like september or something or like that six month period or something like that that could be a thing and that could be uh Good or bad, depending on how you look at it. Because at one point, Yu Gi Oh has done both from my experience. They've had a, a, a times where they had, all right, this is when we're going to drop a ban list, uh, such and such today. This is where it's going to be. And then there was times where it was just random, like it, you, did, you didn't know when it was going to happen. Uh, I would say sometimes they, they did the same thing in the sense of, I guess Dragon Ball, right? They would uh, sometimes they will wait until it was like something else is kind of crazy, and then they're like, "All right, we gotta start hitting it because they're still too good, and we want to sell stuff." A lot of times they do that. Um, sometimes they will hit it uh, reactively, depending on how crazy dominant a deck is. Um, example, always the Pepe. perfect example: Pepe having Pepe, 31, bro. 31 out of thirty two tops and a top thirty two. Oh, uh, that's Yu Gi Oh, right? Yeah, yeah. they instant. Yeah. They did an emergency ban list like within the next week or something like that, um, which can be good for, Pepe, for the game. It's not crazy, bro. Yeah. yeah, I feel like that's okay though. I feel like emergency ban lists are okay because if, right. if like you said, if 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 they see like thirty one out of thirty two, that's crazy. Like that's totally fine. Um, my my concern is like. Uh, let's say they don't they don't do like like I think Yu-Gi-Oh for a long time had what quarterly ban lists like every three months there was a new ban list. Uh, no, every, it's every six months. Uh, okay, might be now cool. I think, but I know at one point it was every six months or so. Did I remember they used to be hell late with ban lists too? Yeah, though. yeah, that too. That's what I said. They used to just do whatever it felt like at one point. Um, they would say, "Hey, we're gonna have a ban list here," and then sometimes they didn't. Like I think right now it's like every like may and there's like something in like so you might be right in the quarterly now i, th yeah, I think, think it's like so. every three or four now, months they now do it. i think so yeah uh because yeah. well that game kind of needs it because that game they just goes through like each set something busted comes out and it's like all right we need to yep. relax or something because they didn't realize the interaction happens with an old ass card and it's like oh this is broken right. now um right. that's what happens when you have ten thousand plus cards you know right um versus us I think that's why they kind of take their time with it because they're like, all right, it's kind of busted, but uh, we have other things that's coming out, so it might not be too bad down the line. And we kind of seen that with some decks. Like, it, they took forever to hit Grand Quagamon, right? And by the time they hit it, it was like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> right? Beating like, a dead horse no at that point. At that point. Yeah. But uh, it depends on how they, I guess, what they do when it comes to unifications. Yeah, yeah. for sure. 
I just want to say I, I, lo I looked through like the most the DBS ban list and restriction list and holy shit not only do they like have a lot of cards up but like they have so many patchwork hits in there I, like I, I've seen so many cards and that's one thing like I hate that they've done and that they're doing in Digimon because they did that shit with like APOC they hit yeah. like an entire they hit everything, in, <laughs> they hit everything before but they hit APOC. the problem cards and then they hit APOC, but then they didn't take the other cards off the list. And it's like, bro, why? <laughs> yeah, dude, uh, real quick. I'll tell you a real Rest quick story about DBS. Star. They had they had a, a real problem with like a, the, the Mecha Frieza leader. Right. So they they they'd never banned it. Right. Until until they finally like they eroded it to the point where it was unplayable. But then they rebooted the leader and made it more broken than it was originally. <laughs> And then they never banned it until it, like, <laughs> literally three or four sets later. Then they were like, all right, we're going to finally ban this leader. So they had the original leader. They had to errata it to essentially, like, ban, like, shadow ban it. And then they rebooted it. And then they decided to wait six months before they banned it. That's what, that's just what they do. They're, they're just retarded. They don't, they don't do it when they need to do it. Sorry for using the hard R. I was going to say, we don't use the R word here, but... <laughs> But yeah, it's just it's it's about this. Sometimes I hate be uh, no, not sometimes. Uh, I, you know, I love. I just I guess let's get into the meat of the, the the podcast. I love Digimon. You know, Digimon is it's always been one of my favorite series, and definitely playing the card game. It's like elevated so much about Digimon. You know, I remember being a kid and wanting to like absorb so much Digimon, and I'm able to do that now as an adult. And as an adult it's like super tough because it's like damn man like i love this card game but <laughs> bandai they don't love us <laughs> they i swear it's terrible bro it bandai really treats feels us that like way. side pieces <laughs> we are bandai's side chick bro. we aren't the wife we we don't like we they don't come home they're not like oh our wife and kids no no, we get fucked in the car uh, behind the fucking Walgreens, bro, and they just leave. They come, they fuck us, and they leave. That's it. Yeah. And this is why we'll get Bandai sponsors or get, uh, you know, Yo. anything from Bandai. Bro. Things like that. Listen, if I'm wrong, 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 tell if me I'm wrong. wrong if any rep from Bandai ever listens to this podcast, you know, I just want you to know, uh, you know, I love, I love this card game, but uh, also, like, Damn! <laughs> yeah, they dropped the ball. They dropped the ball seriously. Hard, hard. So forward. they 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 have really dropped the ball with store regionals. Uh, store regionals. I don't even like. Do you remember <laughs> we were we were all so excited? So excited, them. so excited for it. We, so hyped. We for thought it. we were getting one because we thought it would. We thought it was like easy enough. We're like, yeah, our store holds sixty four people. Our store has good turnouts for like pre releases and stuff. Like, yeah, surely our store. Is gonna get a store regional, right? Oh, our store, our store didn't a get judge, one. Like, has an actual judge. I like, think the problem right. for us, we don't have two. <laughs> I highly doubt that's an issue. <laughs> that's, 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 that's a fixable requirement. Thing, I think they said right. It was not a. Re it, they said they would provide resources. Here's oh, the problem, okay. right? Here's the problem, right? Illustrious Cards and Games LLC. That is a store. That is in New Jersey. It is a store uh, that is holding both a Digimon store regional as well as a One Piece store regional. There is another store in the Philadelphia area. I would say the greater Philadelphia area. Area. It's in like East Norrington, so it's close enough for the Philly players. It is called Alternate Universes. Specifically, the East Nor Norrington location. They have a One Piece store regional. Do you know what they don't have? A Digimon regional. <laughs> let's 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 try to put two and two together. How can how can how can Bandai approve a store regional for One Piece for a store, and not subsequently approve a Digimon regional? It would have made more sense if they approved a Digimon regional and did not approve a One Piece regional, because maybe they're like, oh, like maybe it may not, maybe you know they're not gonna have as many players show up for Digimon, uh, so you know whatever. But like, 
how did a store get a One Piece store regional and also and not get approved for a Digimon store regional? Which begs the question, right? Why does all of the United States of America with its 50 states have six store regionals to serve 50 states? Have six store regionals, which for those of you who did the math, 64 players by six store regionals, that's 384 players. That is a regional level cap for one tournament that regularly fills up between 256 to 384 players. I am flabbergasted, honestly. I, I don't even know, like, I don't even, it doesn't compute. It doesn't make sense. But I can't even say that that's a good business decision because you would think that you would want to flood the regionals as much as you as much as you can to have people show up and, and buy product or whatever. So like you know, you're taking the opportunity away from the players because no one's gonna travel. Like I mean, New Jersey's close enough to us, yes, but like somebody who who lives further away, they're not gonna travel to New Jersey for that. That's ridiculous. I. I just can't believe that they didn't at least put a store, like a, a store regional in each state. Like, what? Like, I, I, right. if, if, uh, I get it. Like, maybe in uh, fucking Anchorage, Alaska, I don't know if the Digimon scene's popping there, bro. Right. Or I don't know if the Digimon scene's popping in Hawaii. You know what I mean? I get that. But, like, I feel like if a store applied and if like the, they could have done it so that if a store is applied and they got approved if the store didn't meet the quota of 64 people then they just wouldn't fire the regional they wouldn't send the product they wouldn't send the pricing you know what i mean they just wouldn't fire that regional they they like we all applied for regionals what was it yesterday or the day before i forget yesterday i did yeah. yesterday yeah right? so they filled up immediately every single one of them like boom hella fast crazy right the regionals aren't until next month so they literally could have just been like all right every store that got approved let's see if they actually fill if they filled they send the pricing the only things in my head that make any sense is one they're just dumb and they were like oh shit uh, we don't have enough serial omnis to give out to each store that applied two they obviously knew what they were doing and knew that they were only going to get a certain number of stores, which I think is probably more likely. That's probably what it is. They they were like, okay, we're gonna allocate resource. We can allocate resources for thirty one piece store uh, one piece store regionals, and we can allocate resources for eight Digimon, whatever. Which is the stupidest shit in the world because I feel like the whole point of having a store regional was so that Bandai didn't have to allocate resources to begin with in the first place. Why, like, if you were gonna have to allocate resources, then why not give us actual eight regionals? You could have given us like, really big major events instead. That yeah, hold more makes, than sixty-four people. <laughs> it really makes no sense. And on the top of it off, everything, right? It's a lottery system. You're not even guaranteed to get into these regionals now. So if it's sixty-four. If, it filled it held 64 like i think it's like probably like 100 something on like each of them maybe and like you're not even guaranteed a spot like the new sucks. jersey one is currently at 144 applicants right for 64 spots right so like you that new you jersey store bad? that new jersey store is legit holding it's there for us from people from pa jersey new york connecticut massachusetts rhode island like they, they had to fill all these people and then I don't know I don't know if Maine has a scene but like Maine's up there if they really want to come all the way down um, you know what I'm saying or even like a little farther down from us you know like maybe people from Ohio might want to go because it's kind of semi not close but like you know where they have a, a, a spot right and then you have what's the other stores they have for us it's one in somewhere in the that's Midwest it. that's random they have one, one in Virginia, Virginia. Virginia. So, and then one in Kansas. Virginia's That's already right. at, I think Virginia's at 130 right now. Right? Yeah. And by the way, you can still apply to these events. Like people listening to this podcast, yeah. you guys can still come and apply. I think it's open till June 30th to apply. Yeah, it's, it's open for a minute. But, but these are already like the two we've named that I know of, they're already double the capacity yeah. of people who have applied. You <laughs> think that's not bad. guaranteed. <laughs> You think that's bad for Digimon? That's I know, you know, I, I know it's gonna be people, oh, you're talking about One Piece. Listen, 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 listen. There is 
596 applicants for the New Jersey Store Regional at Illustrious, Jesus. which is the same store that's holding the Digimon that's Regional. Crazy. 596 people. Let's okay. Let's let's expand <clears throat> it. Let's expand it. There were no stores in New York City chosen to hold to a One Piece region. Let me repeat that. Let me repeat that. There were no stores in New York City chosen to hold a One Piece store regional. Do you know how wild that is? The New Jersey gets one in New York doesn't get one is kind of crazy. Like, I understand New Jersey is like the extended New York metropolitan area. Yeah, but still. There are so many LGSs in New York City that it is absolutely insane and completely idiotic to not have I'm not, I love Digimon but I can understand not having a Digimon store regional in New York City why is there not a One Piece store regional in New York City wow that That's is crazy. I want there's not even a One Piece I don't think there's a One Piece regional near the DC I think the One Piece regional in Virginia is in Roanoke which is like four hours or something from DC bro but you know it's also crazy though. And, for and all also these, um, on Wednesday. Um oh. you know it's also crazy though, but like some of the big stores didn't even get them. PBG. Why is PBG not hosting PPG a store regional? Didn't get one. Well, yep. I'm pretty sure Core TCG didn't either. Why are they not hosting I one? I didn't see I didn't like, see it, any of the big name TOs. Yeah. Play TCG didn't either. Have I one. mean, I know they, they these three host like the major online ones a lot and then they host uh, like the one one a month uh, in person ones, but like they can't even get one question mark. That makes no I sense. I'm sure. You know what I'm saying? I know sense. George. Bro, I know George at PPG applied. I know that yeah. much. Bro, I think that for one piece, bro, I think that literally there might be 10 store regionals in Texas alone. I might like literally like there might be 10 in Texas, like one state got 10. There should have been one regional at minimum in each major city in the country. So I, LA, I agree. New York, Heavy agree. Uh, Miami, uh, Houston or whatever, Dallas, wherever, like every major city in the country should have had one. Granted, I know, you know, you're anybody who's watching this that lives in Alaska or Hawaii, you guys are always get the shit end of the stick. You're probably not going to have a regional out there just for traveling purposes. But every major city in the country should have had a regional for both games, One Piece, Digimon, whatever, because it makes it more accessible to the player base. There's not just players on the East Coast and players on the West Coast. There's players all over. So you want to cater to all of your player base to make sure that they support your game because that's going to increase profit. Like they're not they're not approaching it as a bit. They're not approach. They're not even approaching the business side of it. Smart. It's stupid what they're doing. Let's. Oh, so I just want to. I, I was wrong about Texas, by the way. I don't uh, know what I was thinking. I, I, I think Texas has like two or three, but still, like the fact that some states have two or three is crazy for One Piece. I just want to paint three, the picture, four, whatever it is, of where these store regionals were placed for Digimon. We have Washington, that is in the upper left of the United States, and f- in terms of like mileage. From us here in Pennsylvania, except Mike, because he's in Virginia now. That's true. probably three thousand miles. Oh, you're talking 2, about Washington State. Washington State, not oh, Washington right. DC. Get out of here, bro. Get out like, of here. That's like that's like three thousand miles. That is yeah, not driving dude. distance. Hell and no. That is a uh, sure you could fly if you want, but on a lottery system, no shot. No way. So Washington, and then we have New Jersey. Okay, so we've got one on the. On the um, Completely northwest coast, coast, one on the northeast yep. coast. Uh, we've got one in Nevada. Okay, so we've got one kind of serving like the in southeast Vegas. coast, yeah. kind of. We've got one at in California. All right, cool. So you've, you've hit those metropolitan areas. You got one in Kansas, right smack dab in the middle of the United States. All right. And then you've got one in Virginia. One Florida in Virginia. doesn't have one? Nope. So Florida does not have one. Texas doesn't have one. Chicago doesn't have one. You would Um, think at least like the major cities like of the United States would have them. Like New York City, you would think they'll have one. Did they get any in Canada? Uh, Miami. Yeah, they got two in Canada. Luckily. 
Two in Canada. Luckily, one in Ontario, one in somewhere else that I'm Did not. Did Puerto Rico get one? No. Hell no. <laughs> Puerto no. Rico's got they no. got a big they have a big scene in Puerto Rico. I, I know they have players, but no shot they were ever if they couldn't even give the United States <laughs> more than six facts. No shot That's Puerto crazy, Rico though. was getting one. <laughs> That's Puerto Rico's a part of the United States, guys. Come on, it's right there. <laughs> Sorry, if they're not, if mainland United States couldn't get yeah, more no, than six, that, yeah, no, no, I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that Florida didn't get one. That's why. That's the biggest part. That's You're telling crazy. me the state of, but it's not just Florida. You're telling me Florida didn't get one. New York City didn't get one. Boston didn't get one. Philadelphia right. didn't get one. Which is crazy. Philadelphia. That's Philadelphia insane. Has, like, no, really nothing good, in Arizona. Really Phoenix, spots, Phoenix right? didn't get one. Phoenix, That's Arizona crazy. didn't get one. I, I'm That's not even going to map out the One Piece ones. They got 31, so they got a lot more than us. But for their player base, the spot what, spot wise, that's like 2,000 players. They had 2,000 players at Nats. Right. Right. That's and that was invite, right? Their 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 Nats was invite. Uh, no, that was open invite. They were open. Okay. So that was 2,000 players plus at Nats, and you have for the entire month of July. Two, uh, uh, basically a 2,000 cap tour. They have in-persons that they extend to a 1,000 player cap. They have online that they extend to a 1,000 players cap. And and you're capping 30 store regionals for One Piece? I just like... I agree you with know, Mike. Yeah, I, I, under- I, looked, I looked it up to and Texas, by the way, has four in for One Piece. Um, <laughs> Washington has two. Hawaii also has one, which is kind of weird. Wow, that's but, I mean, wow. Like, cool, but it kind of makes sense. I've, like, whatever, it's a big. I understand it's a bigger game, but like also Virginia doesn't have one. I don't know. I I don't know why. I'm stupid, but uh, I thought it did. But like just the the random like I, I just don't understand. Like I wish we actually knew why certain stores got picked and why certain stores didn't, because then I could yell more about this. But all I can do is speculate and be crazy and theorize. Like, like <laughs> I don't, on the like, I don't hat. like, I really don't like, it's very frustrating though. Like why yeah. the fuck? Like I, why weren't we picked? Why wasn't, I don't know, whatever. I'll let the you only, talk. I'm just mad. Yeah. The, the only thing, the thing that the main, the main thing that bothers me is that it, it was a nice idea to have the stores apply for the regional, but there's, Bandai has no risk aside from the product. There's no overhead for them because the store, the store is assuming all of the hosting responsibilities. So they don't have to worry about getting a facility for the weekend. They don't have to worry about what capacity is. So why wouldn't you overdo it knowing that, hey, all I have to do is send them product instead of worrying about I have to get this convention center and fly this TO out and do all the... The store is taking all the responsibility. The store is liable for everything. They have to worry about everything on their end. All Bandai has to do is say, here's the product. Give it out the way you need to and just make sure you have at least 64 players. That's it. There's no there's no risk there. So why wouldn't you capitalize on that and try to maximize on it? And worst case scenario, if let's say every state got a regional. So let's, there's 50 states. We got 50 Digimon regionals. Okay, so what if a few of them had lower attendance than other ones in metropolitan areas? It doesn't matter because you're there's more quantity. So it doesn't this is a situation where quantity is more important than quality because there's no overhead that Bandai has to take a bath on. It's just hey, we're doing this for our player base because we actually care and they're showing that they don't care by doing what they're doing. Hey Mike, you wanted to know what the requirements were for a store regional. I'll tell you right here. Not, not, not. I, I understand what the requirements were. You can tell everyone. I understand why stores were turned away, even if they met the yeah. requirements. Right. So here's That's here's what part. it is. Right. Sixty four player space makes sense because it's a sixty four player cap tournament. Okay. Mm-hmm. Have properly reported events for two or more Bandai card games through TCG Plus. I'm sure almost every store has done that at this point. Can run a tournament using TCG Plus. Isn't that what you just said above? Ensure judges certified by organized play Discord judge or tournament. Easy done. The store must remain open to the public. Why the fuck wouldn't the store remain open to the public? Okay, whatever. 
welcoming to participants of any background belief circumstance. Okay, yeah, makes sense. Satisfies any applicable local laws. Ensure the security of prize materials before and during the event. Properly distribute prize materials. Stores are required to make one social post on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram showcasing the tournament. It's a little bit much, but I get it. At least one of those platforms. Uh, stores must provide a photo of the winner with the first place prize as part of the post-event report. Stores must ask tournament participants to respond to a survey before they leave the tournament. Must provide a valid store Discord ID via your application to receive the correct permissions within the organized play Discord server. It's probably why Gamers Edge wasn't approved because I don't believe we have any sort of a Discord presence there at all. That being said, I <laughs> I'd That's like so to dumb. believe you need a Discord. What? Yes, because yeah, because you need to ver. Let's be, put it like this: you need to verify that you're a store. Um, with the Bandai organized play Discord server, essentially, that's the yeah, official that's just, judging Discord. That's just getting into a server, right? Like that's it's the official Bandai organized play Discord. So you have to be invited into that. You can join it, but you have to be a part of it, essentially. Okay, so that's not difficult to do. It's not difficult to do at all. So let's put let's put in perspective, right? If if there is a hundred and forty four players. Uh, applied for the New Jersey store regional and like 130 some for the Virginia store regional. Uh, that means there is a metric fuck ton of players within for New Jersey. Dan said like at least like six to seven states. And for Virginia, I mean, Virginia is a big state on its own, but then that also includes like DC, West Virginia, uh, Maryland. North Carolina, Maryland, even South, South Carolina, uh, North Carolina, whatever's, Maryland. whatever's to the west of it. I don't know what's west of Virginia. Mike, you would know that's Tennessee, maybe? West Virginia, West Virginia, is <laughs> west. West Virginia. Tennessee isn't, isn't Tennessee around like, around yeah. there? Probably Georgia, Kansas, around it. No, Kansas is a little well, farther out. Where, that's where, out. so Chicago, where? Yeah. I mean, Illinois, no, right? not Chicago, no. that's too More far north, up, right? Way yeah. north. Dude, I look at a map Hell on the yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all, y'all don't know your geography or something. Yeah. Damn. So, well, the the <laughs> issue is where um where the re- like the store regional is in Virginia is mm-hmm. like right next to uh Delaware, basically. So okay. Oh, so it's so it's, it's a little bit it's more Delaware. east coast ish. East coast. It, it's like Delaware. Um, North, South Maryland, Carolina, West Virginia, and like wait, like real close, like it's basically next to DC. It's uh, it's like close okay. to that area, right? So, so that's like five to six more states of people who would be willing to drive to this store regional. How many stores applied in the period that you can apply that got rejected? And for like Mike said, for what reason? Were they rejected? Because those are easy requirements to <clears throat> fulfill. Those are easy to say, yeah, we can do that. So what were the criteria? And you have to ask yourself that so much more when you consider that there are stores hosting a One Piece store original that are not hosting a Digimon store original. Are serialized Omnimons the problem? Why are they an issue if that's the case? Then we right, shouldn't also have like, serial omnis for the prizing. It's zero to nine hundred ninety-nine. You should have enough. <laughs> no, it's zero to five hundred. Oh, it's a five hundred model. Yeah, which was that's what we were speculating. No, I did math. I, I did some math. Uh, yeah, in and, the was, and they still had plenty enough to go around. There if was, I believe, right? There was enough to put one in every state. And give out serial omnis to the top two players. So fifty yeah. that was a hundred serial omnis that could be given out, and they still would have had enough for their high level events. So but I think now. we even they were it was enough to have two in every state. I believe so. So the yeah, fact that they only have I that eight, odd, we did the math on it. <laughs> yeah. I the fact that they only have eight means that they're giving out sixteen serial omnis. I I want I, Bandai, if you're listening to this, I want to know. Where the fuck are the rest of the events? <laughs> Where are the rest of the events? Bro, they're going to be riding these serial omnis out for like two, three years, bro. Like, right. yeah. y'all, thought, y'all thought you guys were getting a different serial card? No. They're, they're letting this game die with these serial omnis. The only, the only thing, and I'll play, I'll play devil's advocate for a minute here. The only thing I can think of is Bandai is looking at One Piece as an entity and as Digimon as a separate entity. And they're just looking at the numbers that come in, like revenue and profit. Obviously, we all know One Piece sells a 
shit ton more than Digimon does at this point. So maybe there's some calculation they're looking at and saying, One Piece has sold this amount, so this is how much we can give back. Oh, Digimon no, has sold this 100%. amount. So, right, so that's that's probably the only reason I could think of is why the the numbers are so few is because they just they're just looking at it. They're looking at it as, well, Digimon doesn't sell as well as as much as One Piece, so we're not gonna do what we did for One Piece for Digimon. That's the only I thing. just I, I hear what you're saying. But let's let's think about this, right? The pricing for store regionals is a serialized Omni and then a bunch of more cards and only the finalists, which I believe is like the top eight, get the DGX sleeves, which are easy. I, I'm sh- well sure that Bandai gets those sleeves for pennies on the it's not sure. probably a fraction of a penny, right? Sure. So let's 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 try to let's put it in perspective. Top eight gets the DGX, DGX sleeves to print pricing for a store regional. Probably cost Bandai <laughs> 10, 15 bucks. Like if, if you break down the numbers, it probably cost them like max like 20 bucks. To it probably print. doesn't cost them anything. It, right. It, it's such a minuscule cost because it's just factored into their already existing business processes. Right. It's not like, oh, well, there's a serialized on me. Like that must cost like $100 to print. No, it's probably like an extra like. <laughs> 25 cents. Yeah, I mean, if you're just giving out exist <laughs> if you're giving out stuff that's already in existence, it doesn't cost them anything. If they were printing stuff specifically for these regionals, then yeah, they'll have to pay to have them freshly printed, but if they're already giving existing pricing, so, that's what that's what I'm saying is there's no there's no wait, they take no, they take no hit from this. So there is abs- like you said, there's no hit, there's no there's there no business decision to go into choosing a store for a store regional outside of who do we want to represent us, right. which I can get. You know, you want a good upstanding store to uphold your brand and to bring players into the game. OK, I understood. Tell me that out of the 30 some stores chosen for one piece, there weren't a handful of stores that could have held more store regionals for Digimon i.e. alternate universe and i say alternate universe because i damn well know that there is a digimon community in the greater philadelphia area that heads to all of the alternate universe stores so why was alternate universe not approved i don't know if they applied but i can only assume that they'd apply because doing the math if you're charging a regional level entry 30 bucks by 64 players that's something like 17 1800 dollars and for what to have a bunch of players there on the day, to have them in your store, to buy product, to buy sleeves, to give you more foot traffic, to to be there to buy more shit, get shit off your shelves. So you're making the entry fee and sure, you probably pay something to Bandai, whatever. The stores are making money, Bandai's making money, the game's getting out there, the game is growing. It doesn't make any sense from a business perspective, from whatever perspective we could think of why there's just not more which you know for for the bandai intern who's uh listening to this podcast <laughs> why i don't bro, there's no way bandai even has <laughs> interns, bro. oh i mean there's no way Absolutely. they pay the people so they just do interns <laughs> it's really oh, they no definitely, i was gonna say they definitely have interns because you know they don't pay them yeah, 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 they definitely have it. No, I don't believe it. It's a Bandai. poverty company. Hey, l- listen, we don't. I don't hate Bandai. I don't None hate Bandai. Do. I hate I what like, they're doing. I, I, I do kind of hate what they're doing. Bandai. But I don't hate Bandai. This is not a shit on Bandai podcast. But dude, it like, kind of is. You got to call a spade a spade. Podcast. Like they they made a bad decision. They made a ton of bad decisions, and it's and that that's the issue. It's not even like oh well, like they favored One Piece over us. No. One Piece got shafted just as much as we did. One Piece got shafted in proportion. Like, right. sure, you know, we see, well, we got eight and they got 31. Yeah, that's because our player base is, let's say, let's say 5,000 players nationwide to One Piece's 15, um, 20,000 20. yeah, I would say 20. players nationwide. Yeah. Like, 30 for them is a crime just as much as eight for us is a crime right absolutely so it's not just like oh well like you know digimon is dying 
because I, I saw those comments. I saw y'all. I saw y'all making those comments. I, I, I refrained from commenting. Digimon's not dying. This isn't just a bad Digimon decision. This is a bad Bandai decision. I would like to interject. Band, uh, Digimon is not dying. Bandai is trying to fucking kill it. They are, taking, they are actively taking a pillow right now yes. and smothering Digimon with it right now. And they like check every 30 seconds like you guys aren't fucking dead yet and they keep going. Like, they are waterboarding fucking Digimon as a card game. They're like, you guys are still around? Holy fuck. Like, I, I don't, like, they're literally, to me, it almost feels like they're like, let's see how bad things get. Because I guarantee you, they're like, all right, if they're into Digimon, that means they probably like anime. They like anime. That probably means they like One Piece. Let's just push them to One Piece anyways. Right. Like, like I don't fucking get it, bro. But that's already happened with, with Dragon Ball, though. Right? Like, Dragon Ball was their first game that brought them success, which is what led to Digimon and Battle Spirits and One Piece and all that. And that game is now has two versions of it, which is crazy, still crazy to me that they even they even did that. But everyone said every every set that comes out, oh, Dragon Ball's dying, Dragon Ball's dying. They're still printing cards for that. So it's like it's because that game is popular. Like there is a very devoted DBS base. Yeah. And like all the power to them. Like I I'll be honest, like I really did like DBS as a card game, even in its, you know, fucked up power crap state. Like that game was fun. I get it. I get the hype behind it. That game is great. That being said, <laughs> like Mike said, Bandai is on an active mission to kill their games. They started it when they brought DBS or DBS, sorry, uh, Battle Spirits over here because who were they trying to get to play that game? Their own card game players. Right. This isn't Japan, right? Like, the big thing in Japan is that you can play multiple card games because there are stores open all the time. They're all in walking distance. They're not too far from each other. And you can just pick up and play whatever you want, whenever you want, at whatever time. You can't do that shit in the US. It, right. it, it ain't that easy. Like, nothing's within walking distance for a lot of us. It's weird and that uh, they like to uh, cannibalize their own games Cannibalize is a perfect because it's perfect like why would yeah. you you draw all right i get in the beginning you got dragon ball oh this is very successful let's try something else so the next one you do is digimon which in the very beginning was definitely successful um and then you make was was i know bss and one piece came out like the same time i don't remember they which one came close. out first. they were close they were but, close like, the moment out, you start yeah. you drop four games i get the idea they're like all right, Bandai. Uh, Bandai's thinking is probably like, we got all these card games. You're going to play one of them no matter what. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, like, you're going to still buy yeah. from us regardless. And that's all we care about in that sense. But it's like, but when you're doing that, you're dropping, you got four games. You got a fifth game coming out soon with Uni and Arena. And most players don't play more than maybe two, three games. Two seriously. Games. Yeah. Two games. And then yeah. maybe the other. And they play other games as super casual, or maybe casual. they buy a couple packs here and there, and, and that's it. Like Absolutely. you get to the point where, like you, like I said, you're cannibalizing your own players. Now your own players gotta be like, all right, which Bandai game I want to play? If they want to play Bandai games, because they don't even have to. You still got Magic, you still got Pokemon, you still got Yu-Gi-Oh, right? And then whatever else that's randomly out Flesh there, and Vanguard Blood, and Lord Clash Kana. of Blood, yeah. yeah, you got all so those other stuff games. going on too. So it's not like it's just Bandai with games. Yeah, all these other games too. So like. It's very weird. And so like you get to the point where now we're at, we've seen it ourselves. We've seen it as Digimon players. We've seen it ourselves. We we had like at least like a 10% of Digimon players just instantly go to One Piece just because One Piece had better prizing for them. You know what I'm saying? And so like yeah. that's, you you know, you're taking one and you go into another, you know, you can't always, what is it? You, you can't pay Paul and also pay pay someone else as well rob, rob peter to pay paul there you go right like that's, Got you. that's the saying right like that's you the old can't man do saying. that yeah <laughs> it's also an nfl <laughs> saying quite often because that nfl you're always doing that right yeah. um so like it's it's so, so weird how like they just do that and then now we're at a point where it's like they, one piece is their main child and everything else is like they were like trying to revive the dragon ball but dragon ball is kind of like in this weird state and Digimon is like one piece is up here and then Digimon's up here. And then like 
it goes up here sometimes and then it goes like this a little. Then it goes up like this and it's like this. But it stays in this mid range while you have BSS that way in your room. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, it's just such a weird situation for their car games. And it could eventually just all die and it's just one piece. And that could be yeah. a problem for them too. I, I just want to say. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Adrian. I was going to say, I, I don't think Bandai ever, ever learned like the core essence of what it's a successful card game is yep people you people are attracted people are attracted to anything if it's backed by an into intellectual property that's popular right so of course people flock to it because of the ip they hang around because of the game's development the mechanics the community whatever right so yeah okay well this is a shiny new toy everybody flocked to one piece people continue to play that game because the mechanics are solid they you know at the at, at the end there's there's a point where you get where it's just like yeah it's one piece i know what i signed up for but i'm going to continue to play this game because it's organically evolving the mechanics of it so like they never learned that that is what keeps people like yes it's important to have a, a good ip attached to it but they never learned that we have to continue building on this positively in order to keep the people. And that's, I don't, I don't know how to explain that to them. Cause I you, can't, you absolutely nailed what I was going to basically end podcast with. I said, when we started talking about Bandai, I love Digimon, but I hate, I hate <laughs> that it's a Bandai property. I hate, that I play a Bandai card game because Bandai does not know how to run their card games. Now they're doing as good a job as they can. Like I would say like for 75% of it, right? There there's good, there's good progress being made, you know, like for us over here on the English side, for our Japanese listeners or anybody who might listen on that side, because apparently we have those now. Um, we have a separate English card game producer. We saw that at Nats and, you know, on that side of it, things look to be good. But I watched the one piece. Um, they had like a one piece thing where they talked about, you know, reprints and uh, tournaments and all this sort of stuff. And within the one piece division like there's the one piece card game producer but then obviously there's somebody separate who's heading up the organized play department and then there's somebody separate who's handling this part and like okay understood like delegation makes sense but what doesn't make sense is number one one of my biggest problems with bandai has always been why are you not looking at your other games looking at what has been successful and emulating that like i know part of it is doing parts of Jap uh, Bandai being a Japanese company. If there's one thing that we all know and can agree on with Japanese companies, it's that they're very hard-headed. They're very old and stuck in their ways. They don't change. Sure. sure. Innovation is very difficult. Change is like, you have to like drag it out of them. Honda, uh, you know, we're not a car podcast, but <laughs> Honda's a very big uh <laughs> First person I look at when I think of Japanese companies not changing is Honda. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it, but if you, if you if you know, you know. Um, it's like, why? Why are you like this? You know, you you look at the difference in. Uh, I'm not saying Wizards of the Coast is great, and I can't speak to Wizards of the Coast because I'm not a Magic card game player. And I'm not, so I'm not saying that they're great, but you look at the difference in Japanese company philosophy to every other card game, whether it's Wizards of the Coast, whether it's, uh, what's, what's the name? Uh, Ravensburger. Fuck Wizards of the Coast. <laughs> Fuck Wizards of the Coast. Uh, <laughs> Ravensburger, who runs Lorcana. Uh, I don't even know who runs Flesh and Blood, but whoever runs Flesh and Blood, um, the people who run Grand Archive, uh, what else is popular? Even Bushy. I would say as fucked as Bushy Road can be, I would say Bushy Road does a better job managing their card games than Bandai. And that's because Bushy Road has run many card games and they have one that they have had running for the last 15 years somehow. So I don't know how, but they've made it 15-ish years with this card game. And it's done well enough. 
So even Bushiro doing a better job than Bandai. Bandai just hasn't. Like just like Adrian said, they 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 don't know what it takes to be a successful card game company, and they just keep. <laughs> they're just like, let's roll the dice and let's see if this works. When there's like so many examples, so many things that they could do outside of just playing the RNG game of you know running a successful card game, successful card game division, business, etc., organized play, all that jazz. It's just like, why? Sometimes I hate playing. And I fucking card <laughs> games. It sucks. They were also because I'm like I love everything. Uh, I believe they were the ones that did the Naruto card game back in the day, right? Yeah, Naruto was, was big yep. for them before they yeah. had to close it up. That was their like yep. that was their Naruto child at that was time. Huge. Naruto yeah. was big, and then they couldn't. It was they, they? You had such a big card game that could have you know I wouldn't say dethroned, but could have competed with the top three, and you fumbled the bag with that <laughs> like you had Naruto especially during that time and Naruto was you know that was the big three Naruto One Piece and Bleach so like you had an opportunity in your hands you had gold in your hand and you just let you it you had One Piece before it was One Piece you let it go bye bye I, I don't know why I, I I didn't play Naruto I don't know fully what happened I, he I heard some things what happened but like you let that fall out the wayside and it took what five ten years before dragon ball came out i think it was 2017. I, I was heard 2017 was dragon the, ball right the yeah. Yeah, and game, they just they just didn't have the people to support it because the people that were really into naruto when that card game came out were basically kids so it was hard to get a lot of support mm. for it to continue and actually have organized play and all these things that's what i was bandai heard. had bandai I had actually know. a lot of their bandai had for not, the only reason I know this is because I, I, people that played Dragon Ball played Naruto before Dragon Ball was a thing and they would tell me, but Bandai would actually allow their, it's like a small group of players to be involved with their development. So like they didn't really have like a, an appointed team for like the Naruto development. So they had like a small player base, like play test and develop cards and design cards and stuff like that. That's how, that's how bare bones their resources were and then they had to blow it up but the thing is is that when they when they like trying to revamp it with dragon ball dragon ball was an american game only dbs wasn't available in japan they have a they have a completely different game out there i think yeah. it's like card ass or whatever it's called so they started here and they were successful here from 2017 till about 2019 2022 well, well i would say it depends on where you draw the line there but they were successful for such a long time with just one game because they cared about it and then it was like okay let's destroy this game and branch out and that's fine branching out is normal but you can't like you can't forget like where you started like you can't forget your roots you got to pay attention to the little people and they just yeah. don't do that yeah it's very easy to get lost in the band diverse and honestly like as much as I love Digimon, that is the one thing that would make me drop Digimon. If if I see Bandai go in any sort of way where it's like, well, we're going the DBS route because what they did to DBS was dirty as fuck. <laughs> they really said, here's a reboot and we're going to continue printing cards for DBS so that you don't get upset and quit playing our card games altogether. Like that's the Which biggest so weird. fuck that's you weird I've thing ever seen. seen. So that is such a big fuck you to say. Here's a we're gonna reboot your card game, but we're gonna support your card game at least until the end of the year. Uh, uh huh. <laughs> I, I have a lot of bad things to say about Yu-Gi-Oh. To be honest, like oh, over Konami's, the years of me, Konami's over the terrible. years of me playing, like I have a lot of bad things, but like the master rules that they've implemented over the years, like some of them have been awful, like um. Pendulum format was just a mistake, but they like rectify that. Like they added links back into the game. They're like, or they added a link format into the game. Like that kind of so was a that link format was literally there because they had fucked the game so bad with pendulums. And then after they had <laughs> murdered pendulums and like kind of made the game playable again, now the game is like, in my opinion, pretty much unplayable again. It's so fucking bad. But like at least they can do things like that. Bandai is just like, yeah, we fucked up. We're making a whole new game. A whole new, yeah. Let's just start bro, all over. Like, Crazy, bro. I don't know. 
yeah which, okay. we'll, we'll 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 end it there on that note um i just yeah it's it's the one thing i love digimon i love digimon to death i love digimon so much but bandai will be the death of this game i i think we are the last time we made this type of podcast where we're like uh, a, a bandai uh talk podcast i think we said the same exact thing it's not the yeah. card game that will die it's bandai that will kill this card game mm-hmm, through sheer sure. incompetence like nothing I, this card game has stood the test of time like the fact that there's so many people playing one piece and you look at these store regionals and we're still capped out there's a fucking audience bandai there's an audience for the card game but this card game will die because you don't give two shits straight up digimon came out in 2020 2020. Yes. So it's yes. coming up on five years. That's a that's around the time where Bandai starts to go here. That's that's when it happened. Like five five years is when the window starts to close. Bro, but I, I don't know. I got it's it's unfortunate because I genuinely love the mechanics of this game. It's a yeah. great game. So much. Like I really do love the mechanics. It plays well, it plays so fun. The memory gauge is still the coolest thing that Bandai has done throughout any of the card games they've released so far. One Agreed. Piece, Dragon Ball, Band, like Battle Spirits, whatever. The memory gauge is like still the coolest fucking thing in any card game I think I've ever played. It's so unique to Digimon and like you can't take that away. And I, it's just a genuine shame that they just don't put enough resource into this. I, I don't know. Yep. Absolutely. No, well, maybe they'll so, hear this and change. Yeah, I think I, think yeah, we'll I would have shit. turned the pot off like an hour ago uh, when I said that they. <laughs> yeah, wishful exactly. thinking, wishful thinking, bro. Uh, they go, we're going, we're going to get hit, hit with like a, a cease and desist because of Mike for saying crazy shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey. It's freedom of freedom of speech, bro. We talking last about? time oh, it was Varney God. saying crazy shit while I was on the pod. This time it's me. Maybe next time I'll be you, Dan. It's you just constructive nah. criticism. Yeah, maybe maybe you'll say some crazy shit next time. Nah, you know? nah, nah. Not like that. No, come on. Yeah. We want hey. you to do better, Bandai, because we know you can. I don't think Bandai can actually. I think you're way <laughs> like you are so optimistic for someone that lived through how bad Dragon Ball became, and it's impressive. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, the, here, here, so I, 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 I made myself a promise a long time ago. Like after after Digimon, like if Digimon goes south and I decide not to play Digimon anymore, I'm just not gonna play card games anymore. I'm I just at that can't. point like, too. I can't. I can't. I like Mike said. I cannot live. Like you guys don't understand how invested I was into that game. I lo- Dragon Ball. I gotta get a lot of shit for this. Is my favorite anime of all time. It was what got me into anime. I have a very soft spot in my heart for it. I remember coming home from school and watching it on Toonami. Like all that stuff, right? So when they made a legit game that was enjoyable, the mechanics were great. The art was great. Shout out to, they always have great art. Bandai always has great art, except for One Piece. Um, <laughs> they were all, but One Piece, I one piece so art has grown on me. I was so invested in this game and then I wasn't. And that's when I was just like, wow, like this is, this is actual heartbreak, right? Now. It's, it sounds cheesy, but it is. And then I started playing Digimon and I've fallen in love with the game and I did grow up watching it and I do love Digimon as an IP, but if it happens again, like fool me once, shame on uh, you, fool me twice, shame on me. Like it's not going to happen a third time. So this is it. Yeah. I'm not I'm fool me three times. Fuck the peace signs. <laughs> sure. It's <laughs> a J. Uh, Cole yeah. line right there. Baby. You know what? Sure you know what? That is, that is it. For the today's goat. episode <laughs> of Digipod, <laughs> the digital <laughs> podcast. <laughs> My no, parting if, words. I, if Digimon fails, bro, I'm just playing like Yu-Gi-Oh! Edison format, I think, at this point. <laughs> like, I'm goat, totally no, with you guys as well. Yeah. Yeah. Playing goat yeah, I'm playing goat, or like goat format, bro. Like I'm playing goat format or Edison. If Digimon fucking fails. If Digimon like, fails, I'm, I'm not touching another Bandai game because Bandai does not have a good track nah. record and I'm not going to give them my fucking Correct. money. No, if Digimon it's fails, just... I, might, I might fuck around and go back and start playing Magic. I don't even know. Bro. Oh, okay. Well, we're, we're going off the track there. We don't need to... <laughs> Yeah, so I'm not on that, that track. On, I'm not back on the needle, boys. Uh, so yeah, parting Jesus words, Bandai. Um, obviously, you're not going to do better. So I guess oh, just I don't wonder. kill the card game. Uh, listen to us a little bit more, maybe. I guess I don't know. Um, I don't know. Uh, whatever. I guess. 
<laughs> Long live Digimon. <laughs> Viva la Digimon, I guess. There you go. Or Latin <laughs> listeners before you wrap it. All oh, right. What is and, that? Uh, uh, okay, that's it for today's episode of Digipod, the digital <laughs> podcast for the last time. Until we talk to you guys the next time. Peace. Peace out. Catch on the next one. <laughs>